Well, thank you, Paul. I'm, I'm here to uh, deliver what this audience needs. Another speech, <laughs> very short. <laughs> First of all, I really have to thank for all the incredible hard work it takes to put this extraordinary evening together to Joe Cruz and Sharona Whistler and Howard Katzoff, Alan Jay, Nancy Hollander, Michelle Clark, who worked so hard to make this an extraordinary evening. Extraordinary evening. <laughs> and I also have to say how honored I am to be here with a great Zionist like Gabe Groisman and an extraordinary ambassador who is the greatest U.S. ambassador to Israel we've ever had since 1948, Ambassador David Friedman, just an extraordinary man. I'm just going to say a few things about ZOA. As you saw in the film, ZOA saw that Title VI of the Civil Rights Act only covered blacks and minorities, Hispanics, didn't cover Jews. We didn't like that. We went to Capitol Hill and lobbied that this should cover Jews. We got 40 members of Congress to write to the Department of Education to reinterpret that, that Title VI law. And I asked every major Jewish group to join us to change Title VI. Every Jewish group, you know their names, the major ones, said no, we're not doing it. We did it alone. And because of ZOA, we've now had numerous lawsuits defending Jews for discrimination and harassment in colleges under Title VI because ZOA changed that law single-handedly. <laughs> we've had changes at UC Irvine, Duke, UNC, and many, many other schools. <laughs> Jerusalem Embassy Act, a man who did the most for that act has not gotten any credit. His name is Senator John Kyle of Arizona. <laughs> I went to Senator John Kyle, who was the greatest senator, who was the greatest friend of Israel in the Senate in the, in the mid-90s. <laughs> I went to him and said, let's do a law to move that embassy. <laughs> he said, give me talking points. I gave him talking points. <laughs> he wrote the law. We then lobbied the Senate to get members of the House and Senate to sign it. We had six or seven senators out of 100. That's all we could get. I asked other Jewish groups, AIPAC and the rest of them, join us to get this bill passed. They refused, saying it'll never pass. We're not going to put our name out. <laughs> then John Kyle said, let's go to Robert Dole. <laughs> Senator Dole was the majority leader of the Senate at the time <laughs> and running for president. We went to his office. John Kyle did most of the speaking. I wanted to speak, but I kept my mouth shut. <laughs> he convinced Dole how important this is, and he said, you'll get enormous support from the Christian evangelical community and the Jewish community if you support this bill. Kyle convinced Robert Dole. Dole got on the bill. When Dole got on the bill, suddenly we went from seven senators to 37 senators within a week. <laughs> Because he was the he, he was the majority leader. <laughs> when that happened, APAC suddenly got on the hill lobbying for it. They were afraid we would get credit for this important bill. The Washington Post wrote that the only reason APAC has gotten involved in this bill is they were afraid ZOA would get full credit. That's the story behind the scenes of the bill, which the great Ambassador David Friedman has brought to fruition. 18 years later. Thank you, Ambassador David Friedman. <laughs> we filed the first lawsuit on passports. It used to be an American who was born in Jerusalem, could not say under place of birth Israel, only Jerusalem. We filed suit, took a long effort with others helping us. That law was changed under Mike, uh, um, uh, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, that now if you're an American uh, born in Jerusalem, you can say under place of birth, Israel, that Jerusalem is now recognized as part of Israel. We started that effort. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, when it came 
to opening up a U.S. consulate for Arabs in Jerusalem, which would be a terrible thing. It would undermine the sovereignty of Jerusalem under the Jewish people. Let them have it in Ramallah or somewhere else. <laughs> Biden and his people were committed to opening up a consulate for Arabs in Jerusalem. <laughs> and uh, Minister Shaked of Israel came to all the Jewish groups begging us to support Israel again, opposing this. Not a single Jewish group publicly came out against opening that consulate except ZOA, except ZOA. <laughs> And we spent tens of thousands of dollars with ads in Jerusalem, with banners on, on huge buildings in Jerusalem saying no uh, uh, consulate for Arabs in Jerusalem. Do not undermine its sovereignty. <laughs> and shortly thereafter, Biden and Anthony Blinken, a man who loved going to J Street conferences and praising them, backed off and said, we're not pushing it for the time being. ZOA was alone in coming out against that consulate. <laughs> and finally, <laughs> ZOA launched a campaign many years ago about Hamas members, Hamas officials living in Jordan and how they must be thrown out. We alone launched that campaign <laughs> And after a campaign, after the ambassador, Muad Murasher from Jordan, publicly attacked ZOA for this campaign, nonetheless, they then threw out the Hamas officials from Jordan because of ZOA's campaign. And finally, <laughs> I, I was asked to, to have a meeting only a few weeks ago with the Turkish ambassador to America, Ambassador Murkan. <laughs> Coming with me to this meeting only a few weeks ago in his residence in Washington was our chairman, David Schoen, and our vice chair, who you just heard from, Dr. Paul Tartell, joined me. <laughs> At that meeting, I asked for many things. And one of the first things I asked is, you have two major Hamas officials in Turkey. They direct rocket launchings and wars against Israel. If you really are interested in serious relations with Israel, you must throw out these Hamas officials from Turkey. Otherwise, we know you're not serious about having a peaceful and genuine relation with Israel. He said he would do his best. And last week, I got a call saying Turkey is going to throw the Hamas officials out of Turkey. Out of Turkey. <laughs> and that's happened because of the Zionist Organization of America. In fact, I have a cartoon here. You can't see it too well. Mm -hmm. This is a drunk driver with a W. This is when George Bush W was the president. You see his, his movement is a drunk. And it says here, driving under the influence of Zionism. There's a whiskey bottle that says APAC. This is, by the way, the biggest cartoonist in the Arab world. A whiskey bottle that says APAC and a whiskey bottle that says Z. O A, driving Zionism and making George Bush do the right thing for America and for the Jewish people. <laughs> and I will end <laughs> with saying, we Jews who love Israel must fulfill the very meaning of the word Israel. It literally means fighter for God. That's what Israel means, the definition of it. For Israelis and today's American Jews to heed those appeasers to pursue a vision of one-sided dangerous concessions and reluctance to use real military action against evil regimes like Hamas, Hezbollah, and the Palestinian regime in Iran, whose goal is clear. Their goal is simply murdering Jews and destroying the Jewish state. If we don't fight them in a serious way, we're renouncing the very name that identifies our moral purpose, Israel, fighters for God. As Jews, we are divinely commanded in our holy Torah to pursue true justice, to fight evil, which is Iran and the Palestinian Authority, to defeat those who seek our destruction. We dare not flee from confrontation when the stakes are as high as they are today. It is time for Jews to make clear that compassion and concessions, unchecked, by realistic assessment of their enemies' aspirations to destroy us and murder us is horrifically dangerous. 
Morality does not preach stupidity. Morality does not preach stupidity. Compassion toward our enemies, concessions toward our enemies, unfettered by wisdom, destroys what it wants to protect. And a policy predicated on greater concern for the enemy than the intended victim, which is us, is no less, ladies and gentlemen, than true cruelty masquerading as mercy. <laughs> In every generation, as the Passover Haggadah foresees, enemies will rise up against the Jewish people, against us. But each time we will overcome our enemies, and we have overcome our enemies, and we will prevail each time, as history has shown. We have always emerged to rebuild and become stronger than before. Future years will be a time, I am sure, of regeneration, hope, new opportunities, and stronger Jewish communities. The Torah, our holy Torah, promises that Israel is the Jewish homeland and that it will always remain the Jewish homeland and that the Jewish people will be an eternal people the Torah promises us. And unlike politicians, God keeps his promises. Thank you very much. And please support ZOA. Give, help us prosper, survive, and fight for all of you and fight for Earth's Israel. Help us, support us. We need to be one of your many, many charities. Thank you very, very much.